Hey guys and welcome to the video. In this video we're going to be taking a quick look at how we can paint some rust streaks using only acrylic paints. One of the main things I get on this channel is, you know, some people don't like going out and buying like the enamels and the rust streaks. Uh, one thing I will say is you do have a lot more control with them. Doing it this way is a little bit more risky, uh, but there are some hint tips and techniques that we can go over that are going to help that process. But number one that I will say is thin those paints and work in layers. So don't just go for the darkest first. Start and build your way up because once the acrylics are on, there's no way of getting them off uh, unless you can use like isopropyl alcohol, but then you run the risk of burning the paint and eating into it a little bit underneath. So first up, well, let's take a look at some paints that we can use. Now the main ones that I am going to be using in this video are these two, which are the Vallejo Rust and Corrosion. Now there's nothing special or anything really about these. They are just thin down in my eyes paints. They've got no sort of special properties that really enhance it. But we can use other colours such as like contrast paints and all that sort of good stuff to be able to get rust streaks. Uh, and these two are the ones that I tend to use a lot which is contract, uh, Contrast Griffound Orange and Dark Oath Flesh. Now if you've not got any of these you can also jump into your standard acrylic colours uh, which would be like your browns, yellows and oranges and it's just a case of mixing those together and watering them down and thinning them down enough to be able to get the colour and effect that you desire and there's nothing wrong with mixing all these together. It's entirely up to you to go out and experiment and I would advise getting like an old miniature or just something to practice on so you get used to doing those rust streaks. Now first up obviously when you get to a sort of a completed stage here obviously I've got the Primark Lehman Russ from Forge World that I recently put on my stories. Um, there will be a full tutorial for how to paint this guy up on my Patreon when that does launch. Like I say it is coming and I'll keep saying it but I just want to make sure there's a good chunk of stuff on there for people uh, for when they do get on it. So you sort of want to start this once everything is complete and you know, I'd advise going on there and adding some chips and stuff, but the certain areas that we want to start to weather, first of all, when when it comes to these miniatures, so like areas around, like obviously, that are going to be naturally more chipped, such as down by his feet uh, and all that sort of good stuff, are going to have a little bit more wear and tear. It's just a case of looking at some old armor and grimdark stuff and seeing where this goes. Also, he does have these like little bolts and stuff all the way around his armor, like these little protrusions coming out of his armor. Uh, and each one of these is going to be watered down on the wet palette, uh, maybe one to three parts water. And you're just going to get your brush and just dab onto it. And I do apologize for the focus points on this. Um, it, it, it was a you know a tough miniature to, to film with a camera that I do have. But it's just letting him, it's not like a recess wash, but just paying attention to those areas. Now, like I say, I'm a little bit braver at this, so I'm just going straight in because I've got a little bit more brush control, but I'd advise building this up, you know, if you want to make it really watery, just so it goes on there a little bit, and then you can add bits here and there. Um, and I also put some into some like crevice lines and stuff as though like the rust has run, or those little areas are starting to rust as like a little uh, panel line wash. Uh, which can really help sell the effect, especially down on areas down near the bottom. Now, <clears throat> obviously with this, I'm just doing the one colour, and once that's dried, there will be certain areas that I do go into with a second colour. Now, this is just to give the miniature a little bit of variation, as though like one part's a little bit rusted to the other. Um, and again, it just overall creates that more realism. Also, when it comes to the streaks itself, one of the best tips I can give you is obviously, you know, it, it's it's doing some of our like training stuff, you know, like like disciplines, like locking our elbows in, and getting into a nice comfortable position where you can streak that brush down. Now, obviously, pay attention when you're doing this. If you know if he's got um, an arm that's in a certain position, don't just do everything downwards. Um, as in like say if it were going across his arm at the top you don't want to streak it in the opposite direction because that's where it wouldn't naturally fall so make sure it is going against gravity obviously and again you can just build up these streaks in nice slow um, areas and just you know just slowly building them up and as you get down towards the bottom uh, you can start to um, that's where they want to be a little bit thinner now 
typically when we're using oils and enamels we we tend to get it and streak get like our mineral spirits and like streak it down towards the bottom however one tip i can give you with this is because we want to push that pigment up so the pigment is a little bit more towards like the top is you sort of going to work in reverse so you're going to push that pigment up to the top another tip i can give especially when you're first starting off doing this and you're maybe not you know as like comfortable as doing it is if you get two brushes in your hand so you've got one for your paint and one with just clean water on it and say if you want to streak it down towards the bottom a little bit more once it is dr like before it actually dries so you've done like one streak switch to your brush that's got the water on it and start to wick away some of that bottom stuff and drag it down a little bit and it'll just help create that nice little transition so basically what we're doing in this especially if you've never done it before is working in small sort of like glazes if that makes sense and just building up to the uh, desired effects that's you know that's the whole point of this video i'm trying to give you hints and tips obviously i've been doing this a long time and um, so i've sort of got used to it but when you're first starting off it can be quite daunting uh, as there's no way like usually with mineral spirits to, to be able to wick it uh, away you, you obviously can go back into it and remove it if you're not quite happy with the streak so as you're practicing these are just little hints and tips that i can recommend so that you know as you're working your way around your miniature you're not going to absolutely <laughs> destroy it and think, oh, what have I done? So guys, I know it's been a little bit of a short video, but this is a question that does pop up um, now and again. Um, so I thought I'd do a video on it. And, you know, as I was painting Lehman Rust, this is the effect that I wanted to go rather than using like oils and enamels. Because obviously they can dry a little bit dusty them. Um, but for this, I thought I'd do it for this and give you a tutorial for it at the same time. Um, so thanks for watching i hope you've enjoyed it um in the next video obviously we do have um a video coming up on like verdigris and stuff i've got one of them coming up if you want to check out another video on rust that i recently did uh, then a link will be in the description below if you want to really delve into some rust and get some awesome looking rust effects just using acrylics and until next time guys i'll catch you soon